Hi GovConners, Steve Graff here. Welcome to GovCon Insights, where we're going to try to teach the finer points, the basics, the advanced on government contracting for selling actual products to the government. A lot of you out there focus more on the service area, and that's wonderful. There's seven trillion dollars a year of that going on. But there's this whole untapped world for actually selling physical products to the government and all the government agencies out there that are looking for them. And when I'm talking about products, I'm talking about everything from toilet paper to hammers to screwdrivers to, to paper clips to paper itself. How about envelopes? Anything you can pick up, touch, feel, taste, whatever, that's considered product sales to the government. And that's what I've been doing, and I've done it with some success. So I'm going to try to share what I know, what I've learned. Come along with us. It's going to be several videos. Most of them will be pretty short. So, so on this one, let's talk about who I am and then what we're going to do with this program. So my name is Steve Graff. Some of you may have seen me on Kizzy's podcast, her video vlog that we did. She interviewed me, and it was a wonderful experience. Dr. Parks is phenomenal in this field. But what I noticed was when the show was over and it was posted and it was live, my emails blew up. People asking all kinds of questions about selling products to the government. But it exposed a need for answering questions and teaching people more about selling products to the government. Over the last year, I've done in excess of 30 different contracts. They range anywhere from $480 all the way up to $52,000. I have a couple of multi-year contracts where annually they will spend between fifty dollars and $60,000 with me. Total contract, quarter million dollars. I have one uh, from a particular state who's got a five-year contract. Once a year, they're going to place a $12,000 order with me. Not huge, not life-changing, but I sure like knowing that for the next four years, I've already fulfilled the first year, the next four years I know I've got business coming in from that multi-year contract that I won the bidding on. So that's kind of what I've done over the last year. We're going to try to touch on as many different topics as we can that are all focused on selling products to the government. And some of the future episodes we're talking about where to get products. Where do you find 500,000 rolls of toilet paper? Where do you find 600 hammers? Where do you find 60 water bottles? Where are the best sources for those and how you can set up accounts with these sources and maybe even set up net 30s with them if you're in the right position financially and business-wise. We're going to talk about the different bidding platforms out there and there are a bunch of them. I know a lot of you have seen GPO.gov and Dibs and of course you all know Sam.gov, um, DLA, all of those different Unison. There's a bunch of them out there that you already know. But for every one of those big names that you know, there's 10 or 15 smaller bidding platforms that you don't have any idea about. And I'm here to tell you about a lot of those. I don't know all of them. I'm still being exposed to new ones every day I'm, in, I'm doing this. So I'm going to tell you how to get in with those smaller bidding platforms that may give you a much better chance to win bids because instead of bidding against 120 different companies on the federal platforms, you may be bidding against three companies on those smaller platforms for the same type of contracts that you get elsewhere. Once we get through that, we're, I'm actually going to show you how to submit bids. Now there's a bunch of different types of bids you can submit. The easiest ones, the, the simple electronic digital RFQs are you enter your price, your terms, click submit, and you're done. It's 30 seconds or less once you've got your information put together. The other ones, and some of these, these multi-year deals I've won, require a full RFP. Now RFPs, so far for me, have been different for every one I've turned in. And they're different because each buying agency has their own specifications for an RFP and what you need to put in it. They set up their own table of contents and you follow their guidelines for that RFP. I've had RFPs that were five pages long. I've had RFPs that were 35 pages long. So we'll go into that into a future episode. 
One of the things I really look forward to is the, the episode I'm going to do on working with contracting officers a and the, the mythological impression that people have about these contract officers. A and then we'll get into the truths of how these are just people. They're just most of them really good people that are really helpful, great to talk to, and can really help you through this journey as we go. We're also going to get into some boring stuff but very important, contract clauses that you will need to know. Contract clauses that can change whether you even bid on, an, on a project or not because of a specific sentence that's in a, a bid opportunity. I've had a number of occasions, and it happens every week for me, where I will read through a bid opportunity and there will be one sentence, one requirement that I look at and kind of go, ooh, I don't know that I want to mess with that. or if it adds a complicated wrinkle that's easy to screw up, sometimes I just pass on them. I just I won't even take the risk. I'll move on to others. There's enough out there to keep me busy turning in bids every single day. And then one of the last ones we're going to do is, because it's the hardest, is funding options for your business. Um, let's say you land a contract and it's $20,000 worth of widgets. One of the things you have to do in government contracting world is that you have to buy those widgets, deliver them to the government, and then wait for your money to pay you back on that. So you have to have a way to fund those products going in. And I know everybody talks about net 30, and yes, the government is awesome at paying in net 30 as long as your paperwork is correct, but we're not really talking about net 30 here because you buy the product, you send the money to the vendor. The vendor then packages up, ships the product, it delivers to the government agency, and there's seven, 10, 15 days right there since you've paid your money. The government then has to receive the product, which could take a day, a two days, three days, a week. So there's another week. So you're 21, 22 days in, before you can even submit your invoice. Once you submit your invoice, then the government is typically net 30. So the reality of a net 30 is actually a net 45 or a net 60 from the time you had to spend your money. Can you wait 60 days for your money from the time you spend it? Those are all topics we'll go into when we get into the, the funding options for your business. Feel free to reach out to me if you've got specific questions. I get so many of them now that I'm having trouble keeping up, so it may take a minute for me to answer. Thanks for listening to this one. Let me know in the meantime if there's anything I can help with, and I'll start putting out these videos hopefully as quickly as I can over the next couple of weeks and see if we can't get this ball rolling and get your education up to snuff and get you bidding on contracts and, more importantly, get you winning some contracts. Thanks for listening. Now go have the best day ever.